Um, some people said like stir it while it's boiling. Stir your candy mix while it's boiling. Just don't do that. Don't. talk today about making hard candy and specifically uh, I've found the best way to do it is with concentrates. First question that came to my mind was why candy and I think the best answer is it's simple, it's small, it's resilient meaning it doesn't melt if you leave it in the car or in your backpack, it lasts a long time, it's got a very long shelf life um, and it's it's not chewing. There's no chewing involved for people that maybe don't want to chew their medicine um, or cannabis. Uh, you know, it's it's compact. It's it's a very small uh, small piece of food. Um, I want to just say a few quick things about ingredient quality. I um, found a non-GMO organic corn syrup on Amazon. I actually tried to make hard candy using coconut sugar and agave and I wasn't able to make it work properly. Now it's always hard to figure out if it was this one thing you were doing or if it was a combination of things so I might go back and try it again but I was happy to find um, the, the organic corn syrup on Amazon so I just use that now. Um, and so, you know, the main ingredients are corn syrup, sugar, and water, and then you add these other things to it for flavoring. Um, of course, we'll be adding, you know, co coconut oil and the concentrate and some flavoring, some coloring, perhaps, um, an emulsifier. We'll also try the, the colorings and the flavorings. You can get into a whole controversial world of ingredients and you know food and non-food items if you will um, and especially if you're going to be considering the fact that a lot of people are patients in this community a lot of medicinal users um, I just find it's easier to stay away from certain ingredients for example propylene glycol um, it's found in a lot of vape pens it's found in antifreeze <laughs> um, it is considered safe by the FDA However, um, there are enough red flags that they've said, maybe not for infants, maybe not for immune compromised, maybe not for elderly. So it's just easier, I think, to stay away from that. It's made it harder to find some of those other, you know, flavors and, and colors, but whatever. Um, I think that covers kind of why, why candy. Um, now the product that you're gonna put in the candy uh, the product that I use is a wax product, um, and that can come in the form. Now there's solventless and I guess solvent containing um, concentrates in the wax family. There's something called BHO, which is a butane product, which means when they take all of the cannabinoids out of the plant, they use butane um, to pull those products apart and, and kind of separate them. Um, and then, you know, there's this other process of cleaning out the butane and purging and all these other things. So, um, some folks like to use the CO2 version. I think it's a little cleaner. Um, I think there's some other solvents that are used, but, but what I've found is that most of the wax products tend to retain a lot of the terpenes. Um, and that's important for a lot of people. And, and it really depends on what you go on to do with that concentrate while you're cooking because you might end up killing them off anyhow. But I like the idea that there's a lot there to start with. Um, there's a lot of um, theory and belief around terpenes, um, adding, of course, flavor and um, scent to your medicine, but also a lot of medicinal benefits people believe are in the terpenes um, aside of the THC or CBD or whatever other cannabinoids uh, might be in there. So we've got wax product. That's the first type of product that I'm going to be cooking with. You can also use a rosin or a hash, which is basically solventless and it can either be pressed or just made by hand. Um, 
distillates are, are another option. It um, doesn't typically contain the terpenes that you get in the wax product, um, but it's already decarbed or activated. It is a more clear, uh, less fragrant, a um, little less taste involved with that product. So you can also use that for hard candy. Um, what I wouldn't recommend is making a can of butter, like a, a cannabis infused butter product and trying to um, use that to infuse your, your hard candy. I tried it, not, <laughs> not very pleasant. Um, because you're sucking on the hard candy for a while, it just seems like it, it just kind of like lingers, that, that plant earthy taste. And it's just too, a little too much. It's a little too much for me. If you love that taste and it's, you know, go for it. Um, I didn't have, you know, much success in that route. So I don't really recommend using a can of butter uh, for the hard candy. Um, okay, so how much are we gonna use? Um, this is a good question and this is, the, this is gonna be a little bit of math here, um, but I think it's, I think it's important to go over this. All right, so I have two different ways for coming up with, you know, the math and, and it's not really, I guess the questions become, um, what do I have? So you can figure out how much medicine is gonna be in your end product based on what you have, or you can go with, um, what do I want? I have, you know, maybe a lot more than I need as far as starting concentrate product and um, maybe I want to get a certain end result, you know, with my candy. But let's start with, I've got a gram of wax and I wanna make some hard candy. What do I do? Um, so hopefully this comes out nice and clear. So I've got a gram of wax and that means I've got a thousand milligrams and that's just I didn't have to do anything there, that's just the reality. A gram is a thousand milligrams. So we've got a thousand milligrams of material, of entire wax material. And this part is where we're gonna have to say, how, how do you know what you're working with? And I know what I'm working with because I've tested everything. I know I've taken my stuff to a lab, I've taken the starting product, the concentrate, the end product, I've taken everything along the way. Um, and I know that the wax that I use is 77%. That's what they give you is 77% THCA by weight. Anyways, so what you would do is you take your, your starting thousand milligrams times 0.77 and that gets you 770 milligrams of THCA. So the product that I use is not decarbed. It's not activated. It's something we're going to need to do in the process. The starting material is THCA. Um, if you haven't heard of that, it's it's what's in the starting starting material plants as well. Uh, when you have a cannabis plant, it's THC acid. Um, and so that gives us 770 milligrams THCA, and then this whole decarb activation process where we have to heat the wax, release the acid and then it becomes THC, the, the cannabinoid that you're familiar with that's gonna get you high, the one that you really want. Um, now there's these laws of science, if, if you will. I'm no scientist, but I've spent a lot of time with my lab people, and they tell me that THC weighs 87% of THCA. So if I had 770 milligrams of THCA to begin with, once I've decarbed it, if I've done everything right and I haven't lost anything or, or overdone it or anything like that, then I have the possibility of up to 669.9 milligrams of THC potential is what I call it. That's if I've done everything perfect. Um, now I know this is the last part too, where you've got to kind of like some of these numbers you have to figure out before you can even complete this, right? I mean, you can guess if you don't know, if you haven't tested your concentrate, you can guess that a, a good high quality concentrate is somewhere in the 70 to 90% range. Um, and maybe if you got it on a deal or you got it on the cheaper, like it might be closer to 50% or 60% or something like that. Um, you're also gonna need to know how many of these you're making. And so you take your mold. Um, the molds that I use are really basic right now. They're just these little, little pink guys. And I end up doing like four of these. 
Um, and it always ends up being right around 100. So just for the sake of this example, if we do 100, then um, we, you know, divide the total potential divided by 100, and then we come out with roughly, you know, six and a half milligrams of THC per piece of candy. Um, and that's, that's about what I found them to be. So this is the method of, this is what I've got, and what is my candy gonna be? I just need to know, you know? Um, the other method, <laughs> lots of math, you can pause it or you can say, I don't care. I don't care about the math, just fast forward through it and just do what you want. Um, this is the, uh, this is what I want method. Um, and here's this for a minute, hopefully that's clear. So in this method, we're saying I have a lot of product and I wanna make candy that is a certain potency. So I wanna make a candy that's 20 milligrams THC, for example. So I want each to be 20 milligrams of THC and I know, same as the last batch, each batch makes about 100. That's your yield, makes about 100. So I'm gonna need 100 times 20 is 2000 milligrams of THC. And this is the backwards method. So the math might be a little confusing if you're not like a super fan of math, um, but you could just hopefully trust me and get through this. So um, again, THC is 87% the weight of THCA. And then, so if you're decarbing, if you're using a product that requires decarbing, then you need to do this step. If not, don't worry about it. But if you are, then you need to divide that number by 87% or 0.87. So then you come up with 2298. And that's the number of milligrams of THCA that you're gonna need when you start if you wanna ensure that you're gonna have a 20 milligram piece of hard candy at the end of the process. So then to figure out, well, that's great. I know now how many milligrams I need but how many actual grams of concentrate, how many grams of wax do I need for this recipe? Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that number. So we found out if we're using, and this is again, a couple assumptions here, you gotta figure out what quality of wax starting material you have. If we're using that same 77% wax material, that means there's 770 milligrams of THCA in each gram. I'm going to take that number I need, divide it by the number of milligrams in each gram, and I come out with roughly three grams of wax that I'm going to need. It's 2.99, um, but it's basically three grams, which makes sense, of course, because the last one we did was, you know, six and change, almost seven, and to get up to 20, that's roughly three times more, so we need three grams instead of one. So that's the two, two different... Um, Two different types of ways that you can figure out either how much THC is going to be in your end product or how much starting material you need to get to your desired uh, milligrams of THC in your end product. The next thing I want to talk about is, is decarbing or decarboxylation, big word. A lot of people say activation, I want to activate my weed um, and all that means are just good way to explain it is that if you had some flour, if you had some bud, some weed um, sitting here and you just started eating it, you'd probably never get high. I mean, it's, if that's what you're looking for, um, it's not going to happen. You have to use heat and air um, and time, I think, you know, there's all these different ways that you can get there, but you, the quick of it is you have to use heat and that will um, take the THCA and turn it into THC. You can do that with a lighter in a bowl. You can do that by um, cooking it in the oven, which is what we're going to talk about here. Um, number of ways you can do it, but the easiest way is to take uh, one of these little silicone cups. You can find them really cheap online on Amazon or whatever. Um, take a silicone cup and um, get your, your oven up to um, about 220 minimum 220 let me say that the range would be try to keep it between 220 and 235 um now first thing is you need an oven thermometer and i know you want to trust your oven and it might be a new oven and it might be a great oven um but i learned the hard way that 
you need an oven thermometer. I bought two, in fact, because I kept thinking that I was, you know, still doing something wrong, that I bought the cheap one and maybe it wasn't working properly. And um, maybe I'll do another another video about all the testing results because I've got, I've got a spreadsheet. I've got, I think, at least 41 uh, tests that I've that I've paid to have done on the lab. I've got got lots of uh, lots of fun experience. But anyway, get an oven thermometer. They're five dollars, um, I think, on Amazon, and it'll it'll just give you peace of mind to know that you're in the right temperature range. Because if you're not, you're wasting your product. You're wasting all of your money if you um, don't heat it enough. You're going to have a bunch of THCA that's sitting in there, but you're never going to get high. And maybe you'll get some of the medicinal benefits from it, but you're never going to get high. And you're going to think that I steered you wrong. Um, but if you if you overheat it, if your oven runs hot, and, and both of my ovens at this apartment and the last apartment, both ovens ran hot. And the danger there is that if you get it too hot, um, well, first of all, you're going to start burning off terpenes, which you don't want to do. But if you get it just way too hot, you're going to basically get rid of all the THC. You're going to overcook it. You're going to kill it all off. Um, or it'll turn into CBN, I think. But either way, it's not going to be what you want it to be. So the sweet spot is that 220 to 235. That's where you want your oven. And if you have to open the door every 10 minutes to check on it like I do because you have a cheap oven and there's no window to look through, do it. If you have to do it, do it. It's better than wasting all that money. Um, Got an oven thermometer. <laughs> um, anyhow, so what you'll do is I start with this guy. I put a teaspoon of coconut oil in here, and then I take my wax product, and I dump it in here. Um, pro tip, that stuff's sticky. If you want to try to get it off your fingers, or if you want to more easily work with it, um, I just get a little bit of the coconut oil on my finger before I handle it, and then it comes off so easy. It doesn't even stick to begin with. Um, but if you get some on there and you got to take it off then the coconut oil helps, you know, to kind of release that. So you put them both in here, you put them in your oven that's already at 220 to 235, preheated, already at that temperature, stick it in there. I usually put it on just a baking sheet or something like that um, and set your timer for 50 minutes, five, zero. Those numbers are what I found to work. 220 to 235 Fahrenheit and 55 zero minutes. Um, I've done a, a variation of different things and um, less time than 50 minutes, like I said, will mean that you don't properly decarb or activate your cannabis. So what can happen there, I printed out one of my lab results. Hopefully, hopefully that's, I don't know if it's gonna be clear. It's my first time, so. Um, the colors, if you can see them, the green is THC. And this bluish color is THCA. And what that means, this is a bad picture, if you will. Most of them don't look like this, but it was a lesson I learned. I started the candy at the same time that I started decarbing the wax. I ran out of time. The candy got hot very quickly. And I made an executive decision, a bad one, to just go ahead and throw it in the candy. And I'm like, well, the candy's hot. Maybe it'll finish activating it. No. Um, make sure you've got it decarbed and ready to go before you need it. Um, so what all this blue is, this is the THCA, and what that means is, you know, I didn't do it right, and all of that product sitting there, well, you're not going to get high. So when this candy came out, it had something like five, I think five milligrams of THC, and then close to five of THCA. If I had heated this properly, if I had let it go the full 50 minutes in that 220 to 235 range, um, I could have had close to 10 milligrams per candy, but this one's only five because that other blue part basically is just wasted, um, at least as far as um, psychedelic effects go. So, um, one last thing about the decarbing, and I like to stir mine every 10 minutes, make sure that the oil, the can of oil, and the wax are like coconut oil, I'm sorry, and the, and the wax are mixing together properly. I like to check on it and make sure that it's still bubbling. The little bubbles are a good sign. Um, and yeah, so 50 minutes, 220 to 235, stir it every 10 minutes, check on it, get an oven thermometer. Okay, now, candy making process. I just wanted to show you ahead of time some of the utensils that we're gonna be using. 
Um, and so I'll just kind of pick up little things along the way. I, this is the thermometer, um, and I really just use it because it's got this cool little tip, and that's how I stir um, every 10 minutes. That's how I stir my wax while it's decarbing. You can stir it with anything, um, but this is pretty convenient. Um, I've also got my candy thermometer, um, and this little guy clips on the back to my really heavy, you need a really heavy, thick bottom pan. If you use a cheap pan, um, you're going to burn it and you're probably going to burn it. Um, I've tried that a few times and I, I burn the candy and it's terrible and you waste all of it. It's bad. Um, but so you want this little guy to clip onto the side of your pan. You want this not touching the bottom of the pan if you can, just like a hair above it. Um, and once my, my candy starts boiling and then I clip this on and then it just stays on until, um, until the very end. And then I take it off before I pour them in the molds, but it's a thermometer. I think it was like maybe 10 bucks. And then these utensils, um, in the beginning I use like a silicone spatula, love silicone. Um, and this is just at the very beginning when you're just stirring before it starts boiling. You don't want to stir it while it's boiling. Um, I just stir, stir, stir until all of the sugar is dissolved. Um, once it starts boiling, I switch to a different utensil. Um, and part of that's because in a lot of the candy making videos I've watched, they say that a lot of the like plastic and some certain materials can take up other ingredients. It can um, take up, you know, some of the the crystals when you start cooking the sugar and the water together it can form crystals and you don't want to introduce those back into the mix um, because it can just throw off candy is very temperamental just it's a little difficult um, so this is just during the beginning um, and then I have the the wooden spoon for the end when I add all of my like toppings and everything like that I'll just take this clean spoon that hasn't touched anything um, at the very end and then I'll mix it all together and then this little brush is kind of cool. Um, you don't have to use this, it's not required. Um, there's other ways to, to do this, but what happens is um, when the, near the beginning, the, the sugar and the water are getting hot, they're boiling and they're starting to splash up on the sides of the pan. Um, and the recommendation is to just take some water and kind of like go around you know, the side and let those little pieces get back in um, so that at the end, they're not crystals that come back in, you know, that just mess up the whole batch. So if you don't have one of these, you can probably take a little spoon with water and do the same thing. Or um, I've seen different articles that say you can put like a lid on the top and then it'll keep the condensation will kind of come up to the lid and then it'll go down and it'll like wash off the sides. But you want to make sure you remove that once it starts boiling. So this is my preferred method. Um, you can figure out what works. Last but definitely not least, um, I've got this, I think it's an ice cream scooper. <laughs> um, and it was just one of those things that I kind of like, I needed something at the end. I needed to figure out the first couple batches of, of candy were terrible, um, aside of the ones that I burnt, but trying to get all of that hot candy into a mold and you've got just moments before it starts to set up and becomes too hard to pour anywhere. Um, and so I've seen people that pour it into another, another container, probably like a, like a glass measuring thing or something. It just seems like extra. It seems like extra things to clean. It seems like extra time. It just seems like extra. Um, and this wooden spoon wasn't really going to transfer things properly into the mold. So what I ended up doing was grabbing this little guy because it had the ladle and I knew it could withstand hot temperatures because the candy gets really hot. Um, but this part of it kind of means that it, that the handle doesn't get hot. So just things to consider, things to consider. Um, okay, so that is, that's all the tools essentially that we're going to be using. Um, I think I mentioned not, not stirring, you know, I saw a couple different recipes and approaches online and it kind of made me angry a few times that people posted this stuff that just seemed so false and maybe it worked for them. I hope it worked for them. But when I tried it, I ended up ruining like whole batches, right, of candy. So, um, some people said like, stir it while it's boiling, stir your candy mix while it's boiling. Just don't do that. Don't. 
Um, you'll start at the very end when you add all of your extra ingredients in. Um, but everything else that I read and everything, all of my experience tells me, um, you know, you're going to start on like a medium to low heat. You can mix and mix and mix before it starts boiling and try to get everything dissolved. And then once it starts boiling, don't touch it. Just leave it alone. I mean, if it's boiling, you can do the little like water thing around the edge and get those little like sticky guys off the edge. But beyond that, just don't mix anything. You're just going to want to be patient. <laughs> um, depending on, you know, your range and your pan and everything else, like it's taken sometimes 20 to 30 minutes for me before the candy gets up to temperature. Um, so make sure it all dissolves before it starts boiling. So once the boiling starts, I usually just get into like the part where I get everything else together. Even though you think like, okay, I've got half an hour, I'm going to go change my laundry and I'm going to have a snack and whatever. I've done that and, and it ruins me. I say gather all of the rest of the things that you need and have them ready. Um, and, and trying to get this done, you know, at the right time is kind of interesting, but I always start the pot with the um, sugar and the water and the corn syrup the very, very end of the decarb when I've either got five minutes left or when it's already done. And then I just turn the oven way down and the oven's still a little warm. Um, and then my wax can just sit there in a the little silicone cup and kind of stay warm in the oven until I need it. Um, but yeah, so once, once you got your candy boiling, you can leave it alone for a minute um, and get your extras together. And so the extras that we're going to add, um, each recipe is different. I'll, I'll show you guys what the recipe is that I've been using for my basic hard candy. Um, but what I like to add is a couple tablespoons of coconut cream and a couple tablespoons of butter. I use a plant-based butter. Um, Miyoko's is my favorite cultured kind of European style butter. It's delicious. Um, but fat is supposed to be very important for helping your body um, process THC. Um, I don't have the whole explanation behind that, but that's definitely something I read in a lot of different uh, materials. So the fat's really important. It also helps for a little bit of extra flavor. Um, and then I've got, like I said, some sort of like flavoring, usually pineapple, strawberry, whatever, some kind of color. Um, usually I try to go for like plant-based, you know, plant colors, like a beet powder, you know, to add color to my strawberry flavored hard candy, that kind of thing. Um, I've also learned over time that I need to add an emulsifier. So you've got all these different, you know, ingredients and you could end up using, um, a flavoring that's got like alcohol base. A lot of vanilla extracts are, um, contained in alcohol. There's, there's alcohol and there's a little vanilla extracts. You know, there doesn't have to be, but a lot of people have those. So if that's the case, you've got this like water, this oil and this alcohol, and they're just, they're not going to want to mix together very well. And I have made, um, one or two that had like an alcohol based flavoring in them. And yeah, it was a mess until I got a hold of an emulsifier. And the one that I use is, um, a sunflower lecithin and it comes in this little container and it's just a powder. And so I use, you know, depending on the recipe, like a half teaspoon, I think is what it is. Um, and I mix that with my, my butter, my coconut cream, my, um, coconut oil and wax concoction that was decarbing in the oven. I usually melt the coconut cream and the, the butter on half power first, but anyway, mix those all together first, right? You want to in your little granules of everything. I also throw in some cream of tartar and I'll put all the numbers up, but the cream of tartar, the sunflower lecithin are our powders. You're going to want to mix those in really, really well with the liquids, the cream and the butter and the flavorings and the colorings. Um, some of my colorings are, are powdered too. So you just want to get those all really, really, really mixed in first really well before you add them to your hard candy um, mixture that's boiling. The last step is really 305 is about when I, when I call it 305 degrees Fahrenheit. Once my candy hits that temperature, I grab my extras that are sitting in my little container and sometimes I put them in the oven. If I, if I'm done with that exercise well before the candy's ready, I'll just stick it in the oven. It's usually still warm from decarving and let it just kind of like hang out there and stay liquid. Um, but I always make sure I've mixed it, mixed it, mixed it a lot. Um, and, and always again, a couple more times right before I add it into the candy mix, because you want to make sure that your medicine specifically is distributed, um, very well. 
and a candy. You don't want to get, you know, one candy that's like 50 milligrams and then you have another candy over here that's like one, you know. Um, so the way that works is at 305, when it hits 305, I pull out the thermometer and I throw in another pan. I always have, because it's hot. It's Everything's hot. You have to be really careful. You don't want to set it on the countertop or on like a paper towel or something else. Just put it in another pan. You can soak that thing in water. It'll be fine. Um, but at that point, I grab my little container with my extras all in it, you know, stir it, throw it in. And this is an important part because my first batch of hard candy came out kind of bad, meaning I had one hard candy that was like five milligrams THC, and then I had one that was two and a half. And that means I didn't do a good job of distributing it evenly. And this is why I thought I read something that told me, turn off, turn off the heat, take the pan off the heat, and then add all your flavorings in, right? No, 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 not for this. Not if you're infusing them. You need to have the chance to mix it in properly. And when you take it off the heat, like immediately the temperature drops and it starts hardening. So I like to leave it on the heat. Don't, don't touch the heat the whole time the thing's cooking. Leave it at the same temperature unless you're gonna boil over or something. Um, don't touch the heat, leave it there. Add your extras. I always turn on a fan at that point because it gets all crazy, but add your extras and then take your wooden spoon, stir it really good for maybe a minute while the heat's going and everything, probably a minute, just stir, 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 stir. And then you can turn off the heat, take it off. And then that's when I grab this guy and throw this in my other pan or the thermometer, grab this guy again. After it's taken off the heat, I stir it probably for another, I don't know, 20 seconds or something. You'll start to see that it kind of like gets a different consistency, gets a little thicker. And then you've got like a minute and you got to get them in all your molds quickly so I just like kind of scoop and go and then you're gonna you'll find that there's like there's mayhem everywhere but after you've done it a few times you'll get to the point where like they're all about the same size and they're all beautiful and um you can even play with it a little bit if you want you know and kind of like make little fun things out of sugar but um that is you know basically the gist I think those are all the really important things you need to know and yeah let's get to the cooking part